Hey guys, Alex here from Strong Style Studios. Uh, doing something a little bit different for the first time ever. Trying to do an audio only video. And uh, hopefully it works. But this is my top 100 matches of 2013. This took forever to finish. And honestly, I finished it a while ago. Just been taking a while to uh, get this video taken care of and figure out how I was going to do it or whatever. So I figured I'd try this out. Um, so let's just get this list rolling. Um, I already did a video with Noah. Uh, about my top 10 matches of the year. So I'm going to cover those really quickly. Uh, obviously, number one was um, in a Kazuchiko Okada and Tanahashi match. I picked the one from King of Pro Wrestling. Saw a lot of people that put Invasion Tech and even some that even put uh, the Wrestle Kingdom match up there. But uh, both all three of those matches were great. Shibata Ishii um, from uh, the G1 Climax was uh, up there as well. Gargano vs. Shingo, amazing match. Uh, Tanahashi Naito versus Okada and Nakamura. From Road to Tokyo Dome uh, was another was a very 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 good tag team match. Actually ended up being better than both matches at, at Wrestle Kingdom this year, so that was shocking. John Cena versus CM Punk from Raw was an amazing match. Uh, Punk versus Lesnar amazing. Cena versus Daniel Bryan from SummerSlam amazing. And I my last number ten my number ten was Elgin versus Jay Lethal from SuperCard of Honor, which is a really really good match. Um, Tazawa and BB Hog versus Doi and uh, Ricochet from uh, Kobe Pro Wrestling Festival. This was a really, really fun tag team match. I'm not gonna. Um, it was just insane action. I mean, these guys really busted their ass and delivered something amazing. Uh, and I'm just kind of looking down the list. Um, Goto Shibata from Domination. Um, easily the best match these guys had together. Um, just these brutality, brutality. It was a lot like the Shibata Ishii match, just a lot uh, more just amazing and just holy shit awesome action. And really, really delivered, especially after like the new the um, the double countout they had in the, the show before. Um, Masato Tanaka and Ishii from Road to New Beginnings. This is a match that a lot of people uh, missed over, and it was really early in the year, and it was an amazing match. Um, Tanaka and uh, Ishii have some great, great chemistry. Really, really stellar stuff. I mean, this really was the match I think that began Ishii's rise to the top in New Japan. Um, the ROH All-Stars vs. Champions 8-man tag elimination match. Cole, Matt Tave, and Red Dragon vs. Elgin. Jay Lethal and CNC Wrestle Factory from Glory by Honor 8. Or no, Glory by Honor 12. Uh, this is amazing. I really love this match. Anytime a match can go over an hour and I'm not bored by the match in the slightest way and I enjoy the entire thing, that's really impressive to me. And I think that this match was stellar. Um, there were a few things I didn't like. Like, for instance, I thought that Taven and Caprice Coleman should have been the first guys eliminated from their teams, respectively. Um, so I was kind of bummed that Kyle Riley and Cedric Alexander were both eliminated. But both guys had good showings. And Michael Elgin looked like a monster in this match. Uh, I do like him and how him and Cole's chemistry is. And I, I know a lot of people don't, but I do. So that's just my opinion. Um, Kenta versus uh, Tasaki Suguri from... Um, Pro Wrestling Noah, Noah Ark, new chapter. I heard a lot of people talk about the Kenta um, Naka, Nakamura match, which was a great, great match. Uh, this one was, was up there as well. I mean, I never heard of uh, Shiguria. I'm probably pronouncing that name wrong, so whatever. But this was a really stellar match. I mean, these guys brought it. It was stiff. It was violent. It was just brutal and really, really well done. I miss Kenta as champion already in Noah because I've already seen a steady drop in just how good the match quality is over in there, even after only a few months of him not being champion. Um, Michael Logan versus Josh Alexander from AIW Absolution 8. This is an incredible match. These guys went 30 minutes to a draw, uh, and they brought it big time. I mean, Josh Alexander, I think this is a guy who is on the cusp of being a breakout star. You see a lot of uh, Michael Logan and him just being this big, giant monster dude, but very athletic, very agile. Uh, these guys had a stellar match. Uh, they're supposed to have a match, a two out of three falls match sometime soon. Josh Alexander had some kind of injury, so he was out for the rest of the year um, in November, I believe. So hopefully that match happens soon, but um, Josh Alexander, really, really stellar wrestler and would like to see a lot more of him in the future. Um, Michael Logan versus ACH from ROH's Dragon Reign, another great match. I mean, again, a match I feel like a lot of people didn't talk about. It got a lot of buzz when it first happened, but then it kind of died out midway through the year. This is the match I think, this is actually the better um, encounter these guys ever had. These guys had a match at POG near the end of the, near the, end of the year, I think, at All-Star Weekend 10. 
and it was not nearly as good as this match. This was incredible. Uh, well worth going anyway to check out. Um, Inner Steam Machine Guns and Air Fox versus the Unbreakable Fucking Steam Machines. That was a great match from Tito G. Um, also, we can nine nine two. That was in the match of the year for Tito G, in my opinion. That was just that was a match where that was Tito G in a nutshell. That was absolutely amazing. It was fun. It was just enjoyable. It was some insane spots. Just everyone. It was a super fun match. That's really one thing I love with Tito G is the fun, and that was a match that I think highlighted what Tito G does great. Um, the Nakamura Shakaraba Intercontinental Title match from uh, Wrestle Kingdom. That was incredible. That was the best Shakaraba match he's ever had, and. For all extents and purposes, probably will ever have. I mean, he, he really has not delivered as high as Shibata has in match quality. But this was a match where I think that he really shined and really delivered something huge. And it's an amazing match. I've watched it numerous times, and it, it does not get any any worse. It gets better, I think, with age. Uh, Eddie Edwards versus Taiji Ishimori from Border Wars. Um, this is a great match. I'm surprised a lot of people didn't really care for this match. I thought it was amazing. Uh, I loved it. I thought it was amazing. Uh, great back and forth match. Just this was an example of when a match doesn't really need a story and it could just be two guys wrestling. And this was a stellar. I really wish we could have seen a rematch. I don't think we ever did in Noah, but that's a shame. Uh, Young Bucks versus AR Fox and Samurai Del Sol uh, from Peter G. Is your body? This is actually Samurai Del Sol's last match in Peter G. And it was a great match. These guys were so great. Really a shame that Del Sol didn't get more chance to shine and to. Um, and to get more of a push in his independent career before going up to the WB. But, you know, he'll be he'll be fine, obviously. I mean, you know, he's great. Um, a ACH versus Kyle Riley from PWG Battle of Los Angeles Night 2. Um, what can I say, man? This match has been praised up and down by numerous people about how great, great it is. It's really a stellar match. And just an example with two guys who take advantage of a match up and just deliver bigger than anyone expected. It was amazing. Loved this match. Loved Kyle Riley's work in POG. Actually, another match that was great was uh, his match with TJ Perkins from POG 10. That was amazing. Daniel Bryan versus Seth Rollins from Raw on June 10th. That was a great, great match. I mean, very reminiscent of some of the old matches that Daniel Bryan and Seth Rollins used to have back in the ROH days. Just phenomenal wrestling. Absolutely loved it. Um, another match I feel did not get nearly enough praise was the last man standing match between Sammy Callahan and Shane Hollister from AAW Day of Defiance 2013. Uh, I really got into AAW this year. I've checked out almost every show, and I really fell in love with this promotion over the year. But this was a match where I was just blown away by it. Booking wise, it was be it was great. It was probably the best last man standing match I've seen in years. Just they didn't rely on on spots. They didn't rely on weapons. It was just two guys beating the hell out of each other. They put over Shane Hollister huge as a top guy which he is now in AAW, and it was really amazing. And Actually, I think it was Sammy's last match in AAW. He was going to have a uh, last match on the next show, but he couldn't make it because of travel issues, which is a real shame. Um, this was an amazing match. Well worth going out of your way to check out. Absolutely. Um, Josh Alexander versus Michael Elgin from AAW Double Dare 2013. This was the, rem this was the first rematch. This was a match that went to a 40-minute um, double pinfall submission. Uh, one guy got the pin, another guy tapped out. So it was a nice setup for the rematch that they had, or were, are going to have one day. Uh, this was great. Not nearly as good as the first match, but still very, very good. And showed a different side, because Michael Elgin was actually trying to out-wrestle Alexander in this match, not just use his strength, which I thought was a very, very cool strategy and interesting way to make the match um, different. Uh, the No Ropes match for the Open the Freedom Gate title between Johnny Gargano and John Davis from Dragon USA Revolt 2013. Another match, I think, that was so early on in the year, did not get enough praise. A uh, very, very good match. Probably the best John Davis match I've ever seen. I mean, he looked like a monster. Gargano was a great babyface and actually told a great story of kind of like, this was kind of the, this was the match, I watched it after the Shingo match, and you could see like the beginning of the Johnny Gargano and heel turn here where he realized, you know, wrestling his normal style match wasn't going to get the job done against someone more powerful than him. So, I interesting to look back on this match and kind of like see, you're going to kind of see the gears begin to turn of the heel turn that took place at WrestleMania weekend. Um, the Evolve Styles Battles Final between Drew Gulak and Biff Music. This was an amazing match. I mean, this is really a match that has a different st a different style to it, really. It was a very, very different match. Very, um, very technical in style. And then like this hard, hard, stiff action. Really loved this match. I thought it was both guys' best match I've ever seen. Um, really made me appreciate the, the their wrestling and seek them out more on other shows. 
Uh, really, go out of your way to check this one out on Evolve 24. Great match, um, and definitely, definitely one of the best matches of the year, and well deserving of the praise it got from some of the other critics out there. Uh, ACH Michael Logan versus Team Ambition from, Dave, from AAW Day Defines as well. This is one reason Day Defines was, was a favorite show of mine last year. It was just because this match was incredible. This is an example of Davey Richards and Michael Elgin going out there with two guys who were pretty still relatively new at this time and busting ass and delivering a stellar, stellar matchup. I loved this match. I thought it was great. Um, ACH looked like a monster in this match because he really busted ass against two guys. And really, I think he was, at the, this point, was the most unknown person in this match. And he really had a show-stealing match, I think, in a lot of ways. Um, oh, okay, here's one. Shima versus Akira Tozawa from Dragon Gate Dead or Alive 2013. This was a good match. I really enjoyed it a lot. It just it was one of these matches where Dragon Gate went too long. And it ended up not being as good as I think they wanted it to be. It was still good. It just... Dragon Gate had a problem this year with a lot of matches where they just went way too long and they dragged and they turned it out not to be as good as they could have been given less time. Uh, the Shield vs. Team Hell No and Kofi Kingston from um, Raw on May 20th. Um, this was, I think, the beginning of kind of like the Shield's just run of single or uh, of six-man matches where they were just amazing. Then this was awesome. Um, everyone played their part well. This was like during the whole time when Daniel Bryan was just getting becoming the master of the hot tag and was running wild and just delivering some amazing, amazing match quality of wrestling. Um, really stellar, and I cannot wait until WWE does a um, like best of the Shield DVD, which should be a huge seller without question. Um, the triple threat match for the ROH World title from, between Adam Cole, Michael Logan, and Jay Briscoe from ROH Final Battle 2013. I really loved this match. I thought it was one of the more unique three-man matches I saw this year where it wasn't it didn't have the revolving door that most three-way matches suffer from and it actually had some very unique spots they had a lot of good tr three-man spots um I thought it was great I thought it played up both uh, all the storylines of the match very well um it did go a little long but they apparently they were stalling for time because Chris Hero was late because he was wrestling at CCW that night earlier so, it was still a very, very good match. And I think a lot of people were kind of shit, shit on it a little too much. Uh, Tommaso Ciampa versus El Michael Elgin from ROH Best in the World 2013. Uh, this was a match I loved. This was actually Tommaso's first match back on iPaper, I think. And a lot of people were going in concerned that, oh, he's going in and wrestling Michael Elgin. Obviously, he's going to lose and it's going to hurt him because he just came back and blah, 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 blah. But this proved the match, the critics wrong because this match was amazing. Ciampa looked great. Him and Elgin have great chemistry. I would love to see a rematch down the road. Um, and really, I think this proved that, you know, you don't need to have a to have a guy go over to be put over. I mean, this was a match where Ch Ciampa went in and delivered huge and earned a lot of people's respect. And people started looking at him like saying, yeah, this is a guy who could be a future top guy in an ROH after this match. Dave Richards versus, versus Jay Briscoe for the ROH World title from Honor in the Heart of Texas. This is actually the best Jay Briscoe title match of his reign. And actually, I think the best ROH title match, well, a singles match, I guess, uh, last year. Um, great, great match. I mean, these guys really did a nice job of playing to the crowd a lot. The crowd really made this match great, I think. Um, there's a great thing where like the fans really wanted to test the strength. And like they did it like, outside in front of the crowd, and the crowd was going crazy for it. So this was a very, very fun match. And I think a lot, it showed a lot of personality from both guys. And just um, their willingness to kind of play with the crowd and have some fun. Um, Kevin Steen versus Jay, Jay Lethal from uh, the 11th Anniversary Show. I really love this match live. Didn't quite turn out as great uh, when I rewatched it on iPaper, on iPay-Per-View. I don't know why. I, just, I, I felt like I missed that certain moment where like I was certain Jay Lethal was going to win, you know? And, you know, maybe it was just because I, I hadn't, I watched it live, and live I, I was sure that Jay was going to win, but watching it on on pay-per-view again just didn't have that connection, but I don't know, maybe that was just me. Uh, Adam Cole versus Tommaso Ciampa during the ROH World Title Tournament semifinals at Death Force Honor 11. I really, really love this match. Again, this is a match where Ciampa, everyone knew he was going to lose, but he still came out with a house of fire, and he made people believe that he had a chance to win, and I think that's when you can see a great wrestler when people suspend their disbelief and believe for a second that someone could uh, have an upset. And that's really an a impressive 
ability in a guy like Ciampa who just brought in high level of intensity and it was a very, very fun match. The Open the Freedom Gate Championship match between Johnny Gargano and Samurai Del Sol from Evolve 22. I love this. I thought this was best, the best Samurai Del Sol match um, singles wise that I've seen. Really, really great. I mean, these guys had some great chemistry. It's really a shame we didn't get to see a rematch because I think they would have had an even better match. And I thought the finish came off perfectly where Johnny Gargano unmasked Del Sol. And it was just a very, very great heel um, finish to Gargano's mentions. And this was still at the time when Gargano was the heel and he didn't overplay the heel aspect in every match by cheating. So that was a nice little touch to it. Uh, Gargano versus Chris Hero from Dragon Gate USA Freedom Fight 2013. I really enjoyed this match. Uh, this was a match that Chris Hero, this was for Chris Hero's first match back. And I think that he really stepped up his game and proved to all the critics uh, or the people that may have doubted him that he was back and was better than ever. And uh, this was actually the best Chris Hero match he'd had so far since coming back. And also, loved the pedigree spot near the end of the match. That was genius. So, uh, good one gave for that one. Um, the Johnny Gargano Kevin Steen match from Bola, um, the quarterfinal match, that was a great match. I really, really happy we got to see these guys finally lock up, and they have tremendous chemistry. I know they had a match at AIW uh, later on in the year. I never got a chance to watch it, unfortunately, although I did hear it was really good. This is a great, and probably the best finish um, or counter to a Gargano escape almost ever. I loved it, and the crowd absolutely lost their mind when that spot happened. The Proving Ground match between Jimmy Jacobs and Adam Cole from ROH Hunt for the Gold. I saw this match live, and this match is incredible. It's only a four-star match in my opinion, but just this is a match where I think Jimmy Jacobs went out there and proved to a lot of his, a lot of the people that think that maybe Jimmy Jacobs didn't have the, the it factor anymore, and that he didn't have what it takes to deliver a huge, awesome uh, main event style match. This proved them all wrong. I mean, this was an incredible, incredible match. Um, just super, super fun. Crowd was really into this match. And it, it was one of the highlights of, of the year was seeing this match live. Absolutely loved it. Well worth going out of way to see, check this match out. Um, Eddie Edwards versus Kyle O'Reilly from ROH Reclamation Night 1. Loved this match too. Um, this was a great match. I mean, these guys had so many great, such great chemistry. It, it's really a shame they never got... A chance to do an extended feud between each other because I think that they would have had stellar matches and I would have loved to see maybe like a ringmasters challenge or an Iron Man match between these two guys because they would have been they would have been great. Really, really a shame. Um, the knockouts or submission only match between Sammy Callahan and Drake Younger from DDT Four 2013. This is the best of the series of three matches that these two guys had in POG. Um, I loved it. I thought it was great. I thought it told a nice story. Uh, I actually liked how. Sammy actually did get knocked out, and it wasn't by a tap out, which I think that they then I should have playing to the stipulation of it actually being a knockouts or submission match only. Just great. I mean, these guys really did have all the matches they had were really good. I really enjoyed them all. Um, the steel cage warfare between Arwitch and Scum from the television show. Um, I really really liked this match. I thought this was a fun match, and it was a good way of ending the feud. Um, everything really played off well. The crowd responded to everything nicely. They were hot for the match. They were they popped for everything. The finish where Nigel McGuinness um, clothesline Steve Carino was awesome. And also just the whole story of Kevin Steen basically destroying the thing that he made, which is the scum group, was a very nice touch. And I really, really, really enjoyed this match. It was a very good match. And uh, a, good, a good match to end a questionable feud that a lot of people didn't like, but I thought was good and just didn't. I don't think it just reaches its full potential. And the last match, match number 100, Dave Richards versus Kyle O'Reilly from Defire to Night 2. I really, really love this match. These guys had a had a better match at PBG, um 10, I think. I think it was 10. I don't know. And I don't know. It was your, it was your body ready. And um, this was a good match, though, and it was really, really good. Uh, the only problem with it was it had that moment where, like, it hit its peak, and then they didn't stop, and they kept going for, like, another two or three minutes and it just was like it reached the overkill it, it kind of fell in that whole role like what Dave Richards matches were during his title reign where he just it went into a little bit of overkill and the crowd kind of they kind of lost the crowd at near the end but still very very good um now those are just a few of the highlights I want to talk about and a few of the matches that I felt that were overlooked by some or just the matches I really enjoyed 
Uh, the whole list is right there. And hey, if you have any questions about why I like the match, feel free to message me on Twitter. And I also will include my top 10 matches from each promotion, um, or at least the top whatever matches that I have um, for each promotion that I followed, which are WWE, TNA, even though there's no four-star match from TNA, which is embarrassing, ROH, Chikara, which I only have two from, uh, Dragon USA slash Evolve, PWG, New Japan, Dragon Gate, um, from the US Indies, and P the Puros, or Japan um, promotions, and two matches from the Lucha promotions that I, I followed, or the matches I've seen at least. But uh, yeah, um, by the way, if this, if this turns out bad, by all means, tell me, and I won't do it again. But uh, I just wanted to try something new. So uh, take care, guys. And please, share any matches that you think that are missing from my match of the year list. And, um, yeah, feel free to share, share your thoughts, guys. All right, take care. Bye.